Hey there, welcome to the Movie Review Mom YouTube channel. I'm the mom and I do the movie reviews. And my goal is to give you the heads up on filmmaking quality and content so that you can make the best decision as to whether or not you want to spend time or money or both sometimes watching a specific film, right? So the specific film I'm reviewing today is called The Creator. This futuristic drama by 20th Century Studios is now playing in theaters. The movie is rated PG-13 and is two hours and 13 minutes long. That's pretty long. My overall movie review mom grade is a B. So let me explain why. Don't flip away to another channel. Keep watching. I'm going to give you an overview in a nutshell, and then I'll point out things I liked and did not like, as well as offer tips for parents, themes worth talking about, funny lines, interesting lines, and recommendations for some other films that are sort of similar that you might also like if you like this one. You ready to dive in? In a nutshell, the sci-fi story is about a war between humans and robots in the future. I mean, in a nutshell, that's that's it. <laughs> a former soldier finds a secret weapon, a robot in the form of a young child. The question is whether the robot slash child was created to save or destroy humanity. Dun, dun, dun. The film was written, directed, and produced by Gareth Edwards, along with his capable team. He was determined to not use a green screen to film, but to actually film on location with smaller cameras and incorporate the sci-fi elements later on. He does a, an incredible job as it turns out, but I'll get to that in a minute. Let me give you some tips for parents. We see a pregnant woman's belly. Uh, there's talk of a nuclear bomb and killing millions of people. There's some profanity. Some languages are spoken oftentimes without subtitles, nothing crucial to the storyline. We, we hear lots of different languages. A lot of people die. We see some of them die. Uh, lots and lots of explosions and destruction and a large variety of weapons are utilized. Some of the themes that are illustrated really well are reality versus artificial intelligence, heaven, love, the meaning of life, the purpose of life, family, and hope. So there were a lot of things I really liked about this movie. For example, the topic of artificial intelligence is certainly timely. I absolutely adore John David Washington in everything that he does. He comes from Hollywood greatness, in case you didn't know. His father is Academy Award winner Denzel Washington. Director Gareth Edwards was so impressed with his performance in the movie Monsters and Men that he wrote this particular character just for him. So that's quite a compliment. And rightly so. Again, John David Washington is a really fantastic actor. I also absolutely love Allison Janney and everything that she does. She is such a chameleon of characters. And in this one, she plays a tough military broad. And um, it's just fun to watch her do her thing. The rest of the cast also does a great job and includes Gemma Chan. Chan, Ken Watanabe, Sturgill Simpson, and the young and talented Madeline Yuna Voiles. She was just adorable. The film has title cards for various sections of the story, which, hel which helps to move the story along and kind of make sense out of what you just saw and where it's headed. And I like that element. Most of the special effects are just really cool and impressive. I love that there are so many different kinds of robots and weaponry that's represented. Uh, there's a monkey with a remote detonator. And I was like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> uh, there are very impressive set pieces. And it's just a pleasure to spend time in each of them and a really great world building, really. This is the kind of movie that just absolutely needs to be seen on the biggest screen possible. So if you can see it in IMAX in your area, then that's great. A lot of the movie was filmed in beautiful Thailand. That location is on my bucket list. So now there were some things that I didn't like given all of that praise. For example, 
many of the scenes are visually dark, which is going to make seeing what's happening in those scenes pretty difficult if you plan on watching them on a small device once it goes to streaming. So just a heads up on that. Honestly, I was a little bit bored, even with all of the spectacular visuals, there was something about the story that felt kind of clunky. And I just felt like I was trotting along, waiting for the big payoff. And, and that's not good. Uh, many times, massive explos explosions go off. And yet certain people, key people are perfectly fine, or they're just holding maybe someone in, you know, dying in their arms, even though their body should have been completely ripped to shreds. So it wasn't very realistic in that regard. Uh, more humor absolutely would have been welcome. The film is extremely dramatic and serious. So speaking of that, I always take notes when I watch movies and I write down funny lines and interesting lines simply so I can share them with you. So you get a taste and feel for the movie and the dialogue and script writing and all of that, right? So as I went back to read my notes, I had only written down one funny line. Uh, and I actually was surprised I wrote down any because there are so many melodramatic moments in this movie. So the funny line that I wrote is uh, Robbie Tan, who plays a character named Shipley. And he's talking to another military guy and he's looking and they're trying to figure out what's going on. So Robbie Tan's character says, whatever it is in there, they're sure worried about someone getting in. And then a character whose name is Daniels, played by Ian Verdun, says, yeah, or it getting out. And that's, you know, the military approach is just bomb things to smithereens, <laughs> you know, destroy it, you know, rather than take the time to understand it and learn about it. So there's a lot of fear involved with this child and that's the irony is that is this little uh, darling little adorable girl you know but does it have the power to destroy mankind that's really scary now i wrote a lot of interesting lines and i won't uh tell you all of them right now because i don't want you to be here forever but you can see them on my moviereviewmom.com website so for example um, there's a line by Ken Watanabe and he's talking to the main character and he says, like it or not, Joshua, you are part of us now. And that's a significant line because he's always felt a little bit on the outskirts and never really felt that sense of community or belonging. Uh, he, in fact, he served in the military and he's no longer in the military. So he doesn't feel like he's part of them, you know, again, because of that. And then um, Alfie, who again is played by Madeline Yuna Voyle, says or a robot is talking to her. And the robot asks her um, as she's trying to basically get through a border control, uh, TSA type of a deal. He says, what is the purpose of your travel? And she says, to be free. Now, freedom and liberty are absolutely strong themes in this movie as well. And the definitions of those words is explored. And I thought that that was really interesting. Then another conversation is between Maya, played by Gemma Chan, and Joshua, who's played by John David Washington. And so Maya says, when the war started, they protected me, took better care of me than humans would have. She's referring to these robots. And he says, they're not people, Maya. It's just programming. And again, part of the movie is that exploration of what is humanity? Could a robot have human-like feelings and emotions and maybe even morals and ethics, whereas a human would not? Yeah, I mean, they could, but they just don't. They choose not to. Anyway, there's that interplay between those two concepts, and I thought that that was really interesting. Then an interesting conversation between Alfie and Joshua begins where Alfie asks him, and this is in the trailer, by the way, she asks, what's heaven? And he says, he thinks for a minute, and he says, it's a peaceful place in the sky. So then she asks, are you going to heaven? And he says, no. And then she asks, why not? And he explains, you got to be a good person to go to heaven. And then she thinks and she says, then we're the same. You can't go to heaven because you're not good. And I'm not a person. And again, it's that uh, just 
uh, play with definitions and meaning and all of that I just found to be pretty fascinating. And I think that you'll really enjoy that. All right, so let me give you some recommendations of for three films I instantly thought of as I was watching this one. And in fact, two of them were movies that the director said personally inspired him to create this story and this film. Mm -hmm. The first one is called Blade Runner. It's a classic. And in fact, it has a sequel and it also had a remake. Uh, and it's just been around for decades. And then the second one is one that you might not have heard of. It's a 1988 film called Akira. And it also has robot versus humanity. It's a, a, I believe it was an original Japanese film. And then the last one I thought of is much more recent and it's called Ex Machina. And again, it plays uh, between what is AI, what is robot, what is human. I mean, there are so many human robot type of movies that I could have listed, but there was that element of who am I and what is the purpose of life and where am I going afterwards? And, you know, what are we doing now? And all of that that I thought was just so interesting. All right, that's it. I hope that my reviews are helpful. If they are, give them a big thumbs up. And if you enjoyed your time, which I hope you did, uh, subscribe and tell all your friends, come and join me. <laughs> I would greatly appreciate it. And when you get a minute, run over to Instagram. You can find me as Movie Review Mom, although my account is sort of all being weird. But you can find me as my author account, my real name, which is Trina Boyce, spelled B-O-I-C-E. And you can learn about my online courses, my free books when they come out. I almost have a free book every weekend um, as I rotate through all of them. I have 31 of them. Anyway, you can check all of those out as well as my movie reviews. Have a fantastic day and I will catch you in the next one. Bye for now.